Hi, my name is Melvin Wei. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a plant growing series, the first episode about growing California goldenrod from seeds. These seeds have been incubated in five fistfuls of steam sterilized dirt on a heat mat of about 20 to 30 Celsius for 24 days. So the genus is Soledago, species is Californica. So that's the local California species of goldenrod. There are about 100 to 200 species, or 150 to 200, depending on which source you read, of goldenrod species native to North America. And they've gone across the world and have become invasive in some other places, which is rare because usually it's the old world species that come here and invade. So I'm doing some transplants on day 24. I have to be very gingerly about it. And it appears, you know, I've only got a few seedlings in that bag. I wish I had a lot more like I did with my uh, Sweet Annie slash Sweet Wormwood series. But that's not the case. And this is a perennial herb that forms uh, codices or rhizomes. Not too sure what this species will end up looking like and what its root structure will be like. But I have two seedlings there that you can barely see. And yeah, I just knocked one over like that by the watering. But I think that's important if you do the gentle showering. This is a very gentle showering uh, watering can, actually. And you knock it over, that means you didn't do the transplant right. And you've got to right the situation. Otherwise, it just wasn't meant to be. And it'll probably dry out and die or get knocked over later and cause even more damage. So I have to be very gentle not to rip the root tips. It's a very high dexterity endeavor. So if you're not up for this or you don't want to deal with such a delicate, fragile situation, then you might want to wait um, longer in the bag. So it's day 30. I'd recommend watering every two days from the top gently like this, not too deep. Um, leave some soil dry at the bottom to absorb water away. But basically, you don't need to water deep because the roots don't go very deep. I'd be surprised if they were longer than, you know, a quarter of an inch, half an inch, uh, you know, past one or two centimeters. So it's been another six days, and this bag that's normally zipped up and sealed has been pre-unzipped by me for filming convenience only. It looks a little dry in there because of all the evaporation and condensation cycles. And I don't see any more seedlings, which is bad. I wanted more backups. It's day 38. Uh, water cooler in the water closet got busted and it resulted in a waterfall down my balcony. So the maintenance people fixed it, but the towel underneath between this heat mat and the concrete got soaked. And that removed the insulation, made the temperature go haywire. So I hope this thing's still alive, even though it suffered a temporary very hot heat wave up to 130 Fahrenheit essentially. So I've got one more. I'm going to do the transplant like this. Again, and these are very small despite the extra days. Uh, this one was just a late comer. I'm going to plant it between the two existing ones on the right side of this pot. But I hope everything's okay. You know, we'll see later whether that grows and whether the heat wave had an effect on not only this one that I'm transplanting, but all the remaining seeds in the back because uh, there's a potential that once you go over say 40 celsius that you kill everything basically so i think 40 celsius what is that that's like uh, 104 fahrenheit that's very hot and most seedlings or seeds won't uh, tolerate that high of a temperature for an extended period of time the many goldenrod species can be difficult to distinguish from each other due to their similar bright golden yellow flower heads that bloom in late summer. Propagation is by wind disseminated seeds or by spreading underground rhizomes which can form clonal colonies of the same plant. The young leaves are edible. I suppose you could use them as a spinach in a soup or to stir fry or whatever you want to do. And the Native Americans use the seeds of some species for food. Oftentimes I hear or read about people making teas out of them. So it's often confused with ragweed as the cause of hay fever in humans. That's not the case. You know, people often mistake these. In some places, goldenrods are considered a sign of good luck or good fortune, but not really in North America where it's very common. 
gets prized as a garden plant in Europe, you know, Britain, etc. It's become invasive in some parts of the world, such as in China. So I'm using a relatively clean microfiber cloth to dab the water off of the foliage. At this point, I was still thinking about what some people said, you know, if you have water droplets, it'll act as magnifying glass and fry your leaves in the direct sun. So it's day 40. Uh, they're a little bigger now. I have two viable specimens and, you know, one that just popped up like that. It's possible that in all these transplants, some of the seeds that were still dormant from the conditions in the bag just took a little longer to germinate. So I possibly have, you know, like four or five of these things right now. And that's way better than just having two in case something goes wrong. Well, at this phase, I don't really think something's going to go terribly wrong. I mean, these are essentially weeds in the outside world, so they should do a lot better than some of the other plants. Um, you know, typical garden plants or crop plants um, have been selected for by humans for many generations for thousands of years or hundreds of years. So those are more vulnerable to pests and things like that. Although I wouldn't be surprised if some wild pests managed to find their way onto this balcony on third floor and infest this pot if they so desired. It's day 46. First few true leaves have become lobe-like. And, you know, there's nothing really special about these plants. They're just uh, sort of weedy looking in appearance, although maybe not as weedy as uh, Sweet Annie is currently looking. But they have leaves that are you know, kind of a nice healthy green. You can see seedlings here and there, like that one, I have no idea where it came from, probably just a seed with a soil that germinated later. That middle one that we're just looking at between the two biggest ones, that one isn't doing so well. Maybe it just needs more time to get established. And you can see a curled leaf coming out of the top like that. So it looks like some of the leaves of the main two are a little, you know, not perfect but whatever as long as we keep getting growth and bigger and bigger leaves um, the newer leaves will all be right so sometimes you have defects in the beginning but those leaves will be shed pretty quickly you know if you have any sort of sense of perfection you want all the leaves to be perfect looking and stay on forever but that's just not the case i mean we're growing in some pretty ideal conditions at least I think so for some of these plants and the early sets of leaves all get lost um, even if nothing really goes wrong they just kind of wither away or decay maybe the plants just recycle the nutrients in them because they're just not big enough to really do anything for the plant and they're low to the ground they get covered by the foliage that comes out later so the temperature range on this heat mat gets from 30 to 40 Celsius you know, that's uh, 86 to 104 Fahrenheit. I'm going to examine this Solidago bag. It doesn't seem like anything's in there, despite all the extra days. Uh, it's been 22 days, I guess, of incubation. So here's the Solidago envelope. And it tells you what to do and characteristics of them. Harvest the leaves and flowers when buds form. That's the best time. So it's from Bountiful Gardens. I bought three different um, bags of seeds from them at the same time and hence the three growing series started at the same time. The seeds are infinitesimal just like with Sweet Annie but they're darker so they're easier to see. Although if those fell on the ground in the wild you'd never be able to find them. Maybe a harvester ant could see them but I certainly couldn't. I'd mistake it for dirt. So the Dirt in the bag is a little dry due to evaporation, condensation cycles. As I said, uh, the zipper is not completely waterproof as I once thought it would be. And I'm just doing a demo here. It's kind of ugly because I have to do this with one hand, which is not impossible. Um, but later on, I ripped open this bag and really gave it a good shake and brush off to get all the tiny seeds out and into the dirt. Then I used my gloved hand and mixed everything up manually, added some water, then mixed again. So to alleviate the dryness in there, I don't think it was dry or wanting for water in the beginning, 
maybe in the first 24 days but after this many cycles of heating and drying especially during the daytime heat gets up past 100 Fahrenheit you know I think just too much water ran out of the bag so I did a lot of mixing after that just to see if anything would sprout afterwards although I don't really need any but you know it's day 58 and there's that one kind of at the bottom of the pot that I thought was a sweet ante but it's actually one of these so this is one of my two bigger goldenrod plants you know they grow very very slow um, compared to the sweet annie and the leaves are noticeably bigger but still there's nothing really special that i can tell that's about to happen i have noticed in some leaves that the morphology looks like it could change as with sweet annie or the passion fruit vine you know, that's something I'm observing for the first time. Actually, you can see one of the biggest leaves that we're looking at here kind of looks like, you know, it could develop some uh, serration later on, or the later leaves could be serrated. But the new one that's coming out is all uh, funneled like that and sort of wrinkly. So I don't know what's going on. Like, this thing has a wrinkled leaf at the top and some of those are just anomalies but if you compare that to the sweet annie it's it's really different so that seedling i think could actually be one of the golden rods too and i'm just going to water again so do this every two days but later on i realized that the watering tray started to accumulate a little bit of water in it so i've watered this thing very thoroughly and the golden rod actually doesn't have a problem not to the extent that Sweet Annie does of sticking to the bottom, uh, to the soil and the edges of the pot when you water like this. So that's basically it for my first episode of Growing California Goldenrod from Seeds. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further episodes.